Hey everyone, welcome. Thanks for coming to our first volunteer education session. Um, so the topic is food safety. Um, and we're really fortunate to have Andy Kane here from Second Harvest. She is the food distribution manager there. So she is one of the big dogs. And so she does this presentation on um, different lengths of time, like the major one is three and a half hours, but I didn't think that everybody wanted <laughs> to do <laughs> that. So we do that on, we do that <laughs> Yeah, on right, <laughs> right. So she's gonna talk, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, so I'd really like to follow her guidelines. So um, what she says we should do, pretty much so. Um, and she's got some handouts. Do you want those to go after? Uh, let's wait. Yeah, I'll hand, it out, hand them over. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Okay. Take so, it away. So, thank you. Uh, yeah. Cookies up here. We have cookies. <laughs> cookies, <laughs> if you're like in a faint, and they were wrapped and safe. They're not more than three, three or four <laughs> weeks old. <laughs> 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 That's what he's going to serve. Um, so first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for all you guys do um, for Milton Outreach Ministries. It's, your job is so important as volunteers and cannot thank you enough for the work you do to um, help families in need in your area. So I will, uh, like Sherry said, I'm with Second Harvest. Before coming to Second Harvest, I uh, was... Uh, the food pantry coordinator for uh, Salvation Army on the east side of Madison. So I know what it's like to be in your guys' shoes, be on the floor every day, um, I work with the clients. Um, and food safety is tricky, right? It's, it's, sometimes it's not black and white, there's some, there are some gray areas. So I hope today that to um, go over some of that, feel free to jump in, ask questions. This is more of an interactive um, presentation. Um, it's done in uh, Feeding America. Um, you, are you all familiar with Feeding America? So there's Second Harvest and then our parent organization, uh, we're a member of Feeding America. So um, they put this together for all the food banks for us to uh, share with agencies. Um, I will start out by saying that just because you got food from Second Harvest, something from Second Harvest, does not mean that it's safe, okay? We make mistakes at Second Harvest. We rely on volunteers, just like here, um, majority of volunteers that sort through all the products. Um, we have certain guidelines that we, we tell our folks, but sometimes, you know, there's human error, sometimes there's, you know, you've got a big group of, of kids in, they might miss something, so always double check our product. Don't assume that it's safe just because it came from Second Harvest. Um, there's we have unsorted. We get unsorted. I know you, you all get about three thousand pounds of unsorted produce what per day, Pretty Sherry. Much, yeah. Um, and no unsorted. So that means it came to us, Second Harvest, from Walmart. We did not sort through any of that produce, okay? And we shipped it to you. Um, we used to sort it. The issue we were finding when we sorted it is it sat an extra two to three days um, before we could have to find enough volunteers to actually sort through that produce, and we were getting a lot more waste, okay? So we moved to a model where we sent it out to the food pantries for them to sort through to cut down those three days. So that's a lot more food that's able to get out. Well, just a suggestion, though, because <clears throat> there is a significant portion of what we get that's visibly not good. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing, you're loading a truck that you don't have to load so much on. Mm -hmm. We bring it here, now we got to decide what to do with it. And it's not like it takes a lot of time to determine that it's not good. I mean, we could have 10 boxes of bad bananas, and you can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, Absolutely. What I, my suggestion is, if, if, if there was just some way yes. to stop that from being yeah. loaded on a truck and shipped yep. out, yep. it would save everybody. Yep, and, and you're absolutely right. If it's something visibly bad, we should be able to, and you know, it's right on the top. I'm right getting on the, the impression that, you, that you're not, though, you're just sending it. You're not even looking at it. We should be looking at it, absolutely. We, and we do say, look at it. I would it. say most of the um, 
again, it depends on the volunteers. What what you know? <clears throat> a lot of times, it's volunteers picking those orders too, and put it and putting it together. But you know, you bring up a, a very good point. Absolutely, you know, there are definitely sometimes I think that we can certainly do better with that. I would say the strawberries, bananas. Yeah. Strawberries are hard to tell, but bananas. I mean, we. Yeah. The last couple of weeks, weeks, you don't want to know. Oh, I'm. Have. I know. It's, it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So food safety. So, uh, as you all are aware, we have food safety becomes so important because the clientele that you are working with. Um, a lot of times their immune systems are compromised. Right? You've got elderly folks, you have folks that may be sick, um, children, infants, <coughs> you name it. Um, and these are the folks that we need to protect and you need to protect as volunteers and have a second eye um, go through all of the products that you do because you could um, really, if you put out a can that you think, oh, it's good enough, and someone takes it home with them, and it's contaminated, contaminated. Um, it has gone through botulism, um, which I'll get into later. Um, you could really make someone sick and very, very ill. Um, so always keep that in mind. So there are three different ways that food becomes unsafe. First one is biological. Second one is physical, as you can see, they are pulling an earring off the lettuce. And then the third one is chemical, right? So first one is poor personal hygiene. Um, transferring pathogens from your body to your to the food. So as you can see in this picture, someone's coughing onto the food, that's one way. Another way is cross-contamination. As you can see in this picture, there is some red juice on there that is supposed to be like meat uh, that is getting um, ready to eat produce. Okay, ready to eat produce, you're not cooking that. That's you know, you eat that, you can't just wipe that off, right? It's got to go. It's got to be trashed. Um, so that's transferring again. That's biological pathogens from one surface, um, from one surface or food to another. Um, another one is, is time temperature abuse. So um, letting food stay out too long at temperatures that are good for pathogen growth. So as you can see here, this meat is sitting out not in the freezer. Another way is poor cleaning and sanitation. So always make sure you are wiping down your surfaces here. And that again, transferring pathogens um, incorrectly, clean surfaces to the to food, unclean surfaces. Okay, so this is where it becomes a little interactive here. So what's the issue here? Leaving raw chicken breasts on a pallet in a loading area that is not refrigerated. <coughs> yep, time, temperature, very good. What about sneezing on the food? <laughs> What's the problem there? <coughs> very good. Keeping produce that raw meat juices have leaked on? <coughs> very good. Scraping off food from an otherwise clean food storage container. Very good. On that topic, there's a lot of times we get galers in, and there things are broken open, and if we didn't wash the stuff off, mm -hmm. we'd be throwing that whole galer. Mm -hmm. What? What was that, Mark? What's galer? The big boxes. Uh, big like box. It's an, open, it's an open box. It's a box the size of a pallet, and it's about this high. Oh. And like when it comes in the back, a lot, a lot of times there's everything's just thrown together, and and mm -hmm. stuff is. Mm -hmm. It's broken, stuff's leaking. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, not It's not something that we typically get from Second Harvest. We get it typically from Circo. Mm -hmm. And it could be a variety of things, but it's usually dry products. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it might, whatever liquid might be in there, a lot of times we're just cleaning the exterior of a package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but if it's something that is vacuum sealed, and it's still, let's say it's, like you said, you have, it's a box of cereal, right? And the outer box is contaminated with, 
I don't know, let's say baking soda. Um, you can wipe that off. As long as that inner seal inside the bag of cereal is sealed and not, uh, there's not a hole in it or anything, it's still safe. <coughs> So how would you know that it's, uh, in, other than opening it, how would you know if it's sealed? Open it. Okay. Yeah. That's typically what we'll do, and then we'll retape things. Okay. You know, the outer package gets exactly. retaped. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So um, don't let food stay too long at temperatures that are good for pathogen growth. Um, you guys are um, one of a kind in that you have just an awesome space to bring cold stuff in. Your, I, I didn't see your freezers. Are your freezers like the walk-ins? Yeah. Is that just the, the, same, yeah, okay, that's the same thing? So, yeah. So you're very lucky to not to, to be able to put it right in there. What we don't um, know sometimes is when it's transported to us, how long it might have been in an yep. unrefrigerated truck. Exactly. There's no way for us to know. Yep. And there's not. And that's why it, it is so important for you to take that temperature, like you do it in this picture, when it, when you when you get it. You know, use your infrared thermometer. Do you have infrared thermometers? No. Okay. So, um, you know, to, to make sure to be totally safe, I would suggest buying some infrared thermometers. They're like 10 bucks or something um, like that. They're pretty cheap. And then you can actually check the temperature. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. It's turn. And then you can actually check check the temperature um, if you're not sure. You know. But, but you're, what you're looking at is the temperature of the packaging, not the contents. So no infrared thermometers, and I'll get to that in a little bit here. Um, that actually checks the actual products. So we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um. So preventing cross contamination. So as you can see here, how are we preventing cross contamination in this photo? Below the mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good. The meat is below the produce. That is so important. Um, yeah, and typically your meat's always going to be frozen, anyways. But if for some reason you get meat in, you know, right from the store that's very fresh and you feel okay refrigerating it, always make sure that it's below that ready to eat produce. Can we generally put it all right in the freezer? Yeah, I figured you do. Um, so it's being prevented by storing it above that. Uh, most common food allergies. Allergens. Peanuts, gluten, lactose. Mm -hmm. You know what they are? Yeah. And a couple of them. So <laughs> milk, cheese, eggs, soy, <coughs> fish. Um, I'm blanking on... I guess that's, okay, no, it's with dairy, eggs, soy, that's both, um, fish, um, tree nuts, peanuts, shellfish, and um, gluten. Yeah, very good. So these are, become really important when we talk about cross contact. All right, so let's say we have a bag of peanuts. It spills on the on the table here. You quickly, you know, you're always in a hurry because your volunteer is in the pantry and you have 50 families out there waiting to get food. So you, you quickly, you know, wipe it off the table. <clears throat> and then you set down, let's say, um, some, some lettuce on the table, right? That is now cross-contaminated with those peanuts. That's why you have to be so, so, so careful, especially with these eight common food allergies. If someone goes home, goes home, eats that, eats that lettuce, they're, they've got a peanut allergy, you could be in for, they could be, you know, become very ill from that. So these clean and sanitized surfaces that have come in contact with that, so those peanuts, spill them on the table, sanitize, 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 same with <coughs> eggs, um, soy, anything that was on that list. Um, Always inspect food for packaging for leaks, spills that can cause cross contamination. So again, double check the, the bag of peanuts to make sure there's not a there's not any leakage going on there. And then always, of course, wash your hands and change gloves after handling allergens. <clears throat> um, this is another important one: store food with allergens separately from allergen-free <coughs> products. So. You are not going to want to store um, milk on top of <coughs> your, uh, let's say, 
let's use those strawberries for example. Same with that other picture. Because if that milk somehow has a little tiny leak in it and you're not seeing it and, and it drips down and you start handing out those strawberries, it's now cross-contaminated with that milk. So always make sure <coughs> to keep that food separated. Um, so again, immediately isolate that spill and wipe it up. I'm going to skip a couple of these so we can get through these. Okay, so receiving and storing food um, safely. Um, controlling time and temperature during receiving is really important, and this is, goes back to your, your question here. So what's so important about, about this? 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Good range for pathogens. Exactly. We call it the danger zone um, in food safety. Pathogens on food can grow in a range that cause a foodborne illness between this. Okay. So making sure that things that need to be refrigerated are kept refrigerated and are not within this so, um, and that includes time food spends in the truck at the warehouse at the agency. It doesn't matter where it is, it just depends on what that temperature is. Um, so there's common thermometers in food banking, in food banks and in agencies. So one is the infrared thermometer, okay? One is the thermocouple and digital thermometer, and one is the bimetallic stems thermometer. The one I would recommend is the infrared thermometer. Um, it displays uh, temperatures instantly. It prevents cross-contamination and damage to food because they do not touch it. Um, the problem is that it only, like you said, measures uh, surface temperature of food and the equipment. So if you, you know, you've got, to, I should have brought one with, but um, if you've got that ham, right, you get ham donated and use that infrared thermometer, it's going to measure the surface temperature of that. Um, typically the surface temperature is gonna be your highest temperature, so you should be okay to use that temperature. Because so anything inside of there is going to be below. If you really, really wanna be safe, you can use you know, a thermometer like this and actually puncture the package. Um, let's say you get a thousand hams donated you puncture the package and you only have one ham that, you know, you are going to have to dispose of that ham afterwards. Um, <clears throat> but at least you know then that the other 999 are safe. Getting back to the infrared for a minute then, is the surface temperature is measuring the temperature of the packaging? Um, I believe so. That's my experience with the infrared. I believe so. Yes. Yes. Because it wouldn't know where, yes. Um, all right, I'm going to skip some of these here. Um, so reject any food that has not been received at these temperatures, so 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower um, for refrigerated food. Frozen food should be frozen solid. You're usually able to just see that by looking at it and feeling it. If it's frozen solid, you're good, okay? If it's a little squishy, bleh, you're getting, you're getting out of that, uh, you're getting within that danger zone probably. Cut produce, that's another really important one. That should always be at 41 degrees or lower. Um, and whole produce, um, dry storage temperatures. So for that, you know, you've got your potatoes. I saw in your, in your warehouse, in your, not, uh, what do you call it? Distribution yeah. center. Yeah. Um, potatoes, those are fine being left out. Your onions, fine. Squash, fine. What about lettuce? And that I would. You're definitely going to want to uh, refrigerate it. Put a lot of leafy stuff on there. Comes in fresh. Yeah. That's a little more of a gray area. It's going to spoil faster. You know, I would recommend putting it in the fridge. Apples. Apples that would be considered a whole produce. Yes. So I'd be fine out, not refrigerated. Okay. Has this been stored correctly? This is sour cream. Why? Temperature is about 41. Yep, about 41, perfect. 
couldn't see the date to see if it was. Yeah, <laughs> probably the date too. It's, it's a little bit about a year old. I'm sure it's past date. Um, stored. Uh, just, just about that. Okay. What about this? Been stored correctly. Just by eyeballing it. This has been pretty cool with some trees over here. Um. So it, you can tell just by looking at this, it is frozen solid. So it would be okay. This is a tricky one. Um, food been stored correctly? We would say yes on this, and the reason it being the food is stored in its designated food storage area. So a place, you know, if there is. <coughs> All of a sudden, we saw a bunch of food being stored in, in Sherry's office. That might be an issue because that is not a designated place for food storage. If it was stored in Sherry's office, just a question: Would she have to clean it up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, she got a free volunteer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Always more. Um, okay. Okay. Um, well, we see that. Oh, we're just talking about give this. Yeah. <laughs> no. And again, with the bananas, I know bananas have, there's been big issues with the bananas lately. I think um, we've been talking to Walmart about the banana issue. I think last week alone, we got five rotten pallets of bananas. So we, we are got, well we aware, we got, well, <laughs> well, nonetheless, that's outside of that five. That's on top of that, yeah. So, um, well, that's seven and a couple agencies, so it's it's probably more like 15 by the time we, because there actually there's some mixed in there that we missed. So, what's wrong with this one? It's in a banana box. It looks fine to me. <laughs> it couldn't have been stored. I would take before. it off the floor. Bingo. Yeah. It is on the floor. <laughs> There should never ever be food uh, on the floor. It should be at least six inches off the floor. So on a pallet is fine, on a table is fine. Um, I'm not gonna look at those boxes under there that are on the floor. <laughs> Even if it just says corn on the top, it also needs to have, um, and this is actually a law. Um, it needs to have the name of the food. Yeah. <laughs> It needs to have the name and address of the manufacturer, packer, or distributor on it. It needs to have the quantity, so like one pound, 16 ounces, what have you. And the biggest thing, the most important part are, is the, are the ingredients. So even if it has corn stamped on the top, you don't know if there's salt in there. You don't know what else is in there. So that's why, unless you have heard and can get a confirmation from the manufacturer, sometimes if you call the manufacturer, they will tell you. Um, and then a list of each major food allergen that might be in, in that food. Mm -hmm. well, the only, I don't think how they could put all that on, on the top of the pan. So right. Yeah. Right. They'll just throw it out. But the um, little second so harvest labels on the, on the yep. cans that are not labeled officially, the second harvest, yeah, yeah there's an example, has everything you need. Yep, on. exactly. Right. So um, I'll tell you a little secret about these. These cans, we call them brights. These are all very high quality. Um, a lot of them come from Del Monte, Hormel, um, and it might, they may have had an overproduction of it. It may have a pinch of too much salt in it. It's still very, very safe to eat. Um, maybe uh, one of their forklifts ran into one of their pallets and they don't want to sort through it, so they just donate it and have us sort through it for them. Um, so what we do then is, the, the expensive part is for them to put their label on it. Sometimes also if it's, you know, if it's got a pinch too much salt, they don't want their label on it. <laughs> um, you know, same reason why they don't want to sell the product. So um, they have us slap these on there. And who was saying, was it you that said you used to work at Second Harvest, or used to volunteer at Second Harvest? So this is a, you know, one of our volunteer jobs where mm -hmm. slapping those labels on those cans. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get them from CAC like that too. Yep, yep. I've been doing the software. Well, maybe that wasn't a good example. The other one, no, I think. <laughs> I don't think that's <laughs> Um, which one of these should be a started? A. No label. 
about these? Oh. 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 Yeah. What's wrong with the first one? Bulging. Oh, exactly. Pumpkin, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, smaller bulging ends. What about this one? It's got a little hole right there. It needs to go. Um, holes are visible, visible sign of leakage. Well, these sweet potatoes I saw. Um, this looks like it may have some leakage on it, too, from this can. I can't tell per se, but I wouldn't be surprised if this actually came from, from that. Probably I probably squeezed it too hard and it, it came out. Probably just comes that kind of came from the other side of the That's very, very possible, too, yeah. So what's wrong with this one? The seals. The seals. The seals. Watch out for those seals. Dentist lady. Oh, this one. Broken seals. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Again, watch out for those seals. No label. Mm-hmm. What is it? Artichokes, peppers. <laughs> you said you know what it is. Pepper. Pepper. Um. Yes. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, as, as you all, I'm sure, know, um, can't accept handmade jams, jellies, that kind of stuff. It's got to go through a, a, a manufacturer. Yeah, or a certified kitchen, exactly. So what's wrong with this one? It looks like it's been open. Yep, signs of leakage. Yep, this has gotten some molding on it. <laughs> Discolored, discoloration. Again, you've seen a theme here unlabeled. Never put out anything that's unlabeled. And no code dates on it either. If you do get something, let's say you get a whole pallet worth of unlabeled stuff. Talk to Sherry. She might be able to call the manufacturer and, and get the ingredients. And then you can possibly, you know, if it's a lot of product, you might be able to, to salvage it and contact the manufacturer and get, get what's needed for it. So we're going on this one. It's open. Why is it open? Mouse. Yup. That means you got a bigger problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's another <laughs> That's an old other topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so always watch out for gnaw no marks, droppings, that kind of stuff. I think you guys are pretty safe here. Really never <laughs> That's what that can running around is for, right? Yeah. Wait for the wood. In our package damaging, if something like this happens. You can't just tie it up. You can't just tape it up. It's got to go, unfortunately. You can't tape it shut? Unfortunately, no. Because it's it's been opened. Um, you don't know where that product's been. Um, it could have, or what has gotten in it, exactly. No. <laughs> Yeah, if you really wanted to, you could sort through those. There's a couple people in the warehouse that do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Be careful of skin that's that's cut right there. So anytime it, um, skin on a tomato or cherry is broken, mm -hmm. um, that pathogen can only get in there. So. What else did you guys want to talk about? I've got some good um, hand out here about the, the cans that need to be discarded. There, we've got that. I do have these books. Sherry probably has, may already have a couple of these, but I'll leave a couple here for you too. This whole presentation is based off of this book here. So um, again, I did not create this presentation. This presentation was created for me um, for the restaurant, National Restaurant Association. Same folks that put on ServeSafe, the big ServeSafe managers course. Um, so this is a great, great, great book. So you can always reference this. So 
If you want to keep this here. Um, yes, Jerry. On these uh, plastic racks that we put all our produce in. Yeah. I mean, are we doing anything to sterilize those? We're, we're moving stuff in and out of those. I don't know what to do. What's done with that stuff? Yeah. <coughs> What's the question? Periodically clean those out. I, I just yeah. 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 The, the racks that we're putting the all the produce in. The black crates. The black crates, you know. They are we are doing anything to sterilize those to? Well, a couple times a year we wash them. Well, I just, <laughs> no, I just realized that those, we don't always have the same ones. I know that. Those are being rotated oh. in and out all the time. Oh, so we're talking the collapsible. Right, right. 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 Because they're the we're in the pantry. The blue. Exactly. Where we they, put they come and go. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we, had, the kids, well, we had the kids. Well, cleaning the freezer shelves and the cooler shelves should work there. But with the collapsible ones, we are always rotating them back. And I don't know what you guys are doing to clean those black grates, but we actually get to a point where we clean them, but it's not more yeah. than once or twice a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do clean them. And how do you do it? We, I'm trying to think. I know sometimes I see our volunteers use a, use a hose to spray mm -hmm. them. Other times I see them using spray, the spray bottles to Wipe them down. Um, so they're using a whole. At least we're using a pressure washer. Yeah. Well, it is something that we should probably do more often. Yeah. It takes another ball here. Well, summertime. We, the kids. We, we, we were really using good. the high school kids and whatever, but it's right. Mm -hmm. We might have some other options for that. Actually, yeah. some other students are going to start to look at it. Yeah. They enjoyed it. They could get a water yeah. fight out of it. Yeah, so they did like it. As long as the crates come back on the road, we're good. Um, I do have some of my cards up here, so if you all have any, ever have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, Last thing I'll say about the boxes, I know I, I, we touched base, this was this came from you guys. So you see, this is broken open, so what I would do is I would, I would open, if I were you, I would open this up, I'd feel to make sure that it, this feels like it's been open. I can feel that it's not, well, no, it's airtight. Well, now it's crushed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally did it in, right? Yeah. But it's safe. <laughs> but yeah, I would say this, is, this would be fine to, to give up. So feel free to stick it back in there, throw a little tape on there. Or that could be tape. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we check those. Yeah. Or at least we put them in a the box and we build it. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely, my uh, pleasure. Other questions? I think the bigger issue sometimes for us is with the cans is yeah. the inconsistency of the volunteers I who am. are doing the stocking because yeah. they are not here at the session. They don't see this no, piece of paper, so anything and everything gets on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So well, those of us who no, but there's there's a way to control that though, and that's yeah. all about what we do in the back room. It shouldn't even go in back stock without being checked. And one of the problems that we have, even with speed, it is education of the people in the back room. And they're not all here. Well, then that but that, it, it shouldn't be up to the volunteers on the floor to worry about that. We should have already done it. And that's just a safety net. But 99% of it should be checked by the guys in the back. And so, that's what we have to do. Okay. Can we post these in the back? They are it's already in the back. Okay. It's in Can the I back. send them out to everybody via yeah. an email? Yeah, we, we know, do that again. Well, we so know we that there are them. certain things that we have to watch, like the postal workers volunteer oh, yeah. thing. It's because oh, yeah. mm -hmm. people are emptying their shelves yeah, and yeah. dates right. and things like yeah. that. So we know what to watch. Um, so but there's so much. We look at the free but shelf with a different. We have, to, we have to handle the free shelf differently. And maybe there shouldn't even be a shelf for cans. For some things. It's overstocked things. I it's, can understand. But it's overstocked. You be careful with singles and right, things but that are hard we, to We're handling so much volume in the back right now <laughs> that sometimes <laughs> it's just a question of trying to get it all sorted out and moved, and some stuff's going to slip through, but 95% mm -hmm. of it we should be catching. Mm -hmm. And, and, there and are I don't know that we are. There are times when there's so, so many cans coming in, quite honestly, we just take it, okay, these are all beans, they go in the bean box. But we, we don't have time to physically look at each individual <coughs> or, or you'll assume that all the dates are the same. Yeah, we'll assume that it's all the same. Or. But 
But that's where this is helpful. If you guys do all that, then when we see something that may have been missed, that's what's very helpful about mm -hmm. having this. So, you know, there's that second level of eyes to see yeah. something. We have time while we're standing mm -hmm. yeah. waiting for clients. So yeah. We can be looking. Yeah. Yep. And there's always going to be stuff that slips through. You know, it slips yeah. through. It slips through second harvest. You know, it, it it gets to you guys, and it should never have gotten to you. So. And every once in a while, we put something in there and say, "Well, putting this in there just for Bill." <laughs> just a test. <laughs> well, and, and occasionally the people that are out in the store, or maybe there's somebody that wants to bring a donation in the back, and you're the only one that's answering the doorbell or whatever. So now you become one of the food mover types, and so it's kind of up to you. So it's a lot of education. A couple of things I want to ask about are like, uh, and we've been kind of gone back and forth on is when we get bakery in it yeah. has uh, what works, what we can only assume that maybe a cream product or maybe just an icing. It's so hard to sort out, and we put some of it in the refrigerator. Sure. We solve it out, sure. you know, where's the dividing line where we make a judgment yeah. call on it as far as what products are wise to immediately come in and put in the refrigerator and not put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And also as far as dating goes on that stuff. Right. For all bakery. For right. all bakery, right. Um, Along those lines too, what about the bread that's open? I mean, you know, like French oh. bread, that should never be on the shelf. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Anything is open. Yeah, well, no, no, no. Well, draw, no, draw, dis draw a distinction between a package that's been broken open and a package that's meant to be open. Like right. Right. Yeah. Right. A baguette yeah. is meant to be open, yeah. and oh, okay. that's the yeah. way it comes in from high B and whatever. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. So don't say any open package because you can't use that rule. If it if the package is meant to be open, like French bread or whatever. I assume that you know, if yep. all the stores do it, we're going to do it. Yep. And those are usually paper, so it's so a little easier to figure out mm -hmm. between the plastic that's You still have ripped. to look at yeah. it, but it's, but, but yeah. it's, it's a package that's meant right. to be old. Yeah. Right. If, you, if you can place, I have a sword fight with it, it's not going to bend. It's exactly. probably a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the bread, just so everybody knows, the bread doesn't stay on the shelf for more than about three or four days, mm -hmm. at the most. Mm -hmm. Because in the morning, what we're doing on a lot of days, it's even if the dates are close, it all goes out because we've got so much coming in. Yeah. Okay. And then understand where it goes. I don't know if everybody understands where that stuff goes. A couple. Well, there's a couple things that we do. I mean, if you've noticed the trailer that's out there, okay, we're taking produce and it's actually going to a farmer. The big um, garbage bins are filled with bread. Okay. So it doesn't go in the dumpster, but then that gets picked up by the same farmer or a chicken farmer. Some chicken farmer. Yeah. 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 No, no. We we will clear the all the shelves in the bags. Now he won't he won't take bakery stuff, but he'll take bread and rolls. So that all goes out, and that gets hauled out of here about three times a week. But it's not going to a landfill. That's good. Yep. And same with our our. Our, our food waste, we do have, we work with pig farmers as well. So right. great to hear you <coughs> so as well. You're not going to see anything on the shelf in terms of bread or buns that are up there for more than about three days. That's the three or four days would probably be the longest. But I think going back to his point about, you know, the icing and, you know, you get your carrot cake in, checking those ingredients to see what... Well, you know, normally one, yeah. it'll it'll probably say on the label. Mm -hmm. That's what say. Yeah. Yeah. But for example, we'll go and get some things directly from hy Right. And it yeah. might be exactly this kind of cream topping, mm -hmm. whatever. Sure. And it doesn't come to us refrigerated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So That's they, true from Second Harvest. They too. did not yeah. have it, it refrigerated. Is. But our uh, my rule, and I think Norma would probably say the same thing. If I'm not sure, I'm putting it in the cooler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. It looks like it's a cream topping, you know, banana cream pie, something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's going in the cooler. So that's been our it's a cake. Yep. Yeah. It's probably going on the shelf. Yeah. Well, my guess is if, if you looked at the label, it probably doesn't say keep refrigerated on it. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you look at the ingredients, and it says milk, 
cream. But wouldn't the label have to so keep encourage refrigeration I would, then? No, I would think so. I would, I would think, so, think too. so. I I don't know off the top of my head though. That's it's a toss up. But yeah. our yeah. our rule has been put in the cooler for now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When in doubt, put it in the cooler. How do you know how long the bread's been on the shelf? I don't. Issues. I don't. But I, uh, what I'm telling you is that it's never there more than three or four days. Which never is. It shouldn't be. The sandwich somebody, bread or the other all non bread, no. all, all, the all bread and bar. buns. All bread and buns. Like for example, this morning, everything went. Everything was clear off the shelves, and at least on a Monday or a Tuesday, I can tell you it's cleared off because that's what we've been doing, and maybe even on a Thursday. Because you only have multiple dates on some of those. Yeah. Exactly, but you know what? We got so we got so much coming in that we're trying to keep the most, the freshest products mm -hmm. on there, and a lot of what we throw away is fine, but we're just rolling it over so fast that it's not sitting there very long. And in the winter, if you see a note up there on the bread, it might say. Uh, cleared out Sunday, even though there's a lot of stuff on there, that means that there's some of us that will come in on a Sunday and uh, you know I'll clean and then I'll go over to the bread and if I have time and sort through the bread and the man will come in and other people have come in on a Sunday okay. just to do it on Sunday rather than wait till Monday. Yeah, because you could, you could spend a lot of time going through loaf by loaf, you know, looking for dates or mold Many times. and because we've got so much coming in, we don't do that. We just Clear it off and start over. Okay. If I've got a client that takes eight loaves, she puts it in the cart, and she said, good, now I can feed the ducks. So she took off our shelf that is supposed to be our freshest. I wish I would have known that. But you know what? We probably have plenty. Not, not that I would encourage people to feed the no, ducks. No, I agree. In fact, in other words, that... Oh, well, exactly. If, I could tell her. She if you're just going to throw, right. we'll take it out of the bins we that are off by the trailer. That. I mean, yeah. if you do have people that yeah, and if you see that people, take it to feed the ducks. Yeah, if you see people out there opening those bins up, when we put them out there, we tell them if the bins are out there, that means there's bread in it. You can go ahead and take all you want. Feed the ducks, feed your chickens. Or if you're making croutons or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes it's That's what's out there now. You know, and he picks those up two or three times a week. But if they're outside, if the bins are outside by the trailer, they're full of bread and buns. But just as long be careful as you're the first that one there. folks don't take those home to eat because if it's been cross contaminated, as well, even, you well, it's know, all packaged. It's, it's all packaged. It's still in its packaging. The fact is, I. I don't know that we want to encourage everybody going through those. Probably not. Yeah. They probably no, don't. No, I, I we, agree. We, <laughs> but you can, here's a, it is a rare day that we don't have twice as much sliced bread as we need. So if somebody takes four or five off the shelf, big deal. I don't think that happens. Yeah, that's Let good. her take the rye bread. <laughs> <laughs> For the ducks. She bought it the white. No, I don't know. She took the rye. <laughs> Just tell her you've heard a rumor that ducks like rye bread, chickens like white bread. Okay, I will look. Any other questions for Ann before we totally lose it? One question. And obviously they're delicate and they're tomato juice and other good tomatoes. Should we be worrying about the good tomatoes that have intermingled with? I would say you probably want to wash the good ones if you can. The other thing I didn't mention is like, um, you know, tomatoes, apples, anything that's fresh produce that doesn't need a label on it. Right. Of course. So. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah. We go through it a lot. Yeah. I, uh, you oh, said it was okay to uh, touch all this fruit to call out some of the bad fruit yep. in a box, like raspberries or something like that. But when yeah. I was over at another place, they wouldn't allow the customers to put their hands in the bag of grapes to touch them. Well, you as a volunteer, so you can sort. Yeah. As a volunteer, you can sort through it. Um, if you're, you know, using gloves and all that good stuff. Is that your question? I would just, I wouldn't. I mean, based on your volume, I wouldn't bother sorting through strawberries. You know, to get. 
to salvage two of them. Because once because once one starts to go bad, they're all, you know. Lori. Lori. Oh, the other Lori. Yeah. Laura. Okay, Laura, Lori versus Laura. Any other questions for Anne? Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.